A few weeks ago, Apple executives took the stage at WWDC to talk about iOS 12 and the new macOS Mojave. iOS 12 is going to be pretty much focused on bug fixes and there's not going to be a lot of new features added. However, the Mac is quite the opposite. Well, hopefully it's not buggy, but there are a lot of new features in macOS Mojave, which is one of the Mac's biggest updates in years. Now, Apple talked about a lot of these features on stage, but there are several hidden little features that Apple didn't mention at the keynote, and I'm going to show you right now, because when macOS Mojave goes live to the public this fall, you're gonna wanna know them. One of the most interesting features demoed during the WWDC keynote was called Continuity Camera. Greg Federici was able to control his iPhone from his Mac, take a selfie of himself on the iPhone, and then send it automatically and insert it without having to do anything into an astronaut helmet, which was a template inside of Keynote. Now, that was a cool demo, but really how useful is that going to be? Well, actually pretty useful because Continuity Camera, the technology behind that whole demo, is available essentially system-wide on macOS Mojave. Anywhere you can paste or a uh, text or a picture, you can right click on the Mac and then go to insert from iPhone. And then you have the option to take a photo or scan documents. Scan documents is particularly useful because on the iPhone, as of right now, you have to scan a document from within the Notes app. You can't do it anywhere else, which is a little strange. And then you have to save it as a PDF to either iCloud Drive or to uh, locally on your iPhone and then airdrop it over to your Mac. Not an ideal experience, but in Mac OS Mojave, that all changes because what you can do is right click uh, so I'm here in text edit, and if I right click, I can either take a photo or scan documents. Let's try scan documents. Click that, and you'll notice that my phone automatically uh, has the camera application pop up, and I can pick up my phone, and I can just hold my uh, phone above the document that I wanna scan. I don't even have to press the take a camera button. It does it automatically. And then I can you take more scans if I want, or I can just press save. And then once I press save, my iPhone goes back to normal and it automatically inserts into the document that I've selected on Mac OS X. It's really, really handy and it works literally anywhere you can paste a photo. So in mail, in Tweetbot, in Word, wherever you want, it'll work. Very cool. If you ask any pro user what their favorite feature of Mac OS X is, I bet most of them will say Quick Look. It's certainly one of my favorite features. It allows you to preview a file or many files without having to actually open them in the target application. You just click the file and press the space bar. Now in Mac OS Mojave, Apple spent a lot of time on stage talking about how with PDFs and with images, you can edit them. So I could draw on this tweet with a picture. Ooh, it even auto-corrected to a star because it thinks that's what I was trying to draw. Yeah, it really wasn't, but you can do shapes, all sorts of stuff. You can add a signature if you want. Just a lot of really powerful, cool features. And then you press done and you've edited the image without ever having to open it in an application. Pretty handy. But what Apple didn't talk about is that you can also do this with video and audio. So if I click this video clip, I can click the blade tool right here and it will allow me to trim the clip to my heart's content, very similar to an iOS. So if I just want the karate scene, I drag this in and uh, it looks like it finishes about there. <laughs> I can press done and it finishes. Now it does give me the option to save as a new clip or to replace the clip. Unlike iOS, you can't undo uh, your actions. So we're gonna save as a new clip just cause I don't wanna delete the old one. You can change the name and then you can press save. What you can also do is rotate the video if you want, all without having to open Final Cut Pro or another trimming application. It also works on audio. So you can open an audio track and you can of course click the blade tool and trim the audio to your heart's content. Strangely enough, however, it only works with WAV and Apple M4A files. The most common file format, MP3, is not supported. And I don't really know why. It's probably something to do with licensing fees and restrictions, but hopefully it's added in the final release of macOS Mojave. But anyway, quick look, pretty dang cool iCloud Keychain got a major upgrade in iOS 12 and macOS Mojave. I'm still going to continue to use a password manager because I think it's a better solution overall, but there is a great new feature if you do use iCloud Keychain. Now, everyone knows that in Safari, your passwords and your logins will autofill, but it doesn't work in third-party applications. And if you forget your login credentials, you have to go to Keychain Access and it's a whole app hidden in the utilities folder. It's not very elegant. It's much better on the iPhone than it is on Mac OS. But now you can launch Siri and say, Siri, what is my Dropbox password? And Siri will open up the passwords app. You can 
uh, authenticate. And then you'll see, oh, there we go. She's searched Dropbox, the Dropbox result has come out, uh, and you can just click it once to reveal your password and your username. Now, I don't know why they do it this way, but you can't select it like you would think maybe you can. So you actually have to right click to copy your username and or password. But once you do that, you paste it and there you go. You are ready to go. That's not a real account. So, well, it might be, but it's not mine. <laughs> If you're anything like me, you spend a lot of time taking screenshots on your Mac. Now, Apple did spend a considerable amount of time during the keynote talking about how they have reworked the screenshots functionality to be pretty similar to iOS. It goes down in the corner, you can click it, a new screen pops up and you can draw on it and annotate on it and anything you wanna do. And then you can also share it through this share sheet directly to Apple's pre-approved applications. Unfortunately, it only goes to Apple's pre-approved applications. And if you wanna use it in another app, well, you're SOL. Uh, or are you? That's a good question. Well, actually, if you press Shift Command 5 and then you click this little options nugget down here on the bottom, you are allowed to change the save destination. So instead of saving it to my desktop, I can save it to my documents or, hey, look at this, my clipboard. So now what I can do is let's say I'm in TweetBot and I want to do a new tweet and I want to take a screenshot of, I don't know, this one singular star. I can uh, press command V and hey, look at that. It has pasted that screenshot that I took. That's a really good screenshot, by the way. It actually looks like something that the Hubble telescope might've actually taken. That's Pluto from the Hubble. Anyway, <laughs> um, it's, it's really great if you want to use screenshot functionality without having to actually save it to your desktop and having you know, old screenshots pile up on your desktop view. You just paste it to your keyboard, you use it, and then it goes away forever. Uh, one thing you do have to note though, is that for whatever reason, uh, it doesn't change back. Like that's a permanent change. So if you want to go back to saving your images to your desktop, you're gonna have to open this window again, save to desktop, and then you're good to go. Okay, so this one isn't really hidden per se, but Apple didn't talk about it in the keynote. They spent a ton of time talking about dark mode, but they didn't mention that you can change the accent color of Mac OS, finally. You've always been able to change the color of a drop-down menu to gray if you don't like the default blue. And you've always been able to change the highlight color, you know, when you highlight text. But now you can choose the accent color and that's wonderful. You can choose green or purple or red. And now anytime you invoke a menu, uh, hey look, we've got red now, which, ooh, MKBHD color. That looks pretty dang good. What they also don't mention is that even though the highlight color changes when you change your accent color, you can actually have two different ones if you want. So I could have a red accent color and a green highlight color if I wanted, which is a really bad idea, but you can do it. There you go. This last feature is incredible, and I don't know why Apple didn't talk about it on stage. They mentioned a little bit about how this now works on iOS, but who cares because Android's been able to do this for years. What am I talking about? Okay, well here I am at twitter.com ready to log in, and I know I'm going to get a two-factor authentication text message pushed from my iPhone. Now, unlike a Windows PC, it is handy because iMessage shows me the code up here in the corner, I can type it out on my keyboard, or I could open iMessage, I could uh, copy and paste the code, and it's not that big of a deal, but it is kind of a pain. And if I do do it from the corner up here, then I'm going to have an unread message and it disappears before I can dismiss it. It's a big deal, okay? Well, guess what you can do in macOS Mojave? You push login, the text message comes in, Safari automatically identifies it as a security code, it fills in the code for you, you press submit and you're logged in. And the best part ever, iMessage says, hey, you don't have any new messages because it knows it was a stupid two-factor authentication code. I don't need to see that it's an unread message because I already read it. It's the best thing ever. And if you don't think so, well, I, you're a monster. Well, folks, that's all from me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these and check out some of the other awesome videos that I've done in the past. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.